voluntary and involuntary movements. First, we're going to talk about voluntary movements. So a term you need to know is skeletal muscles. So skeletal muscles are the muscles that attach to the skeleton and the joints. And there's two types of like ways to categorize um, the muscles. They're either flexors, and these are the muscles that bend the joint, bringing the bones closer together, or there's extensors, which are the muscles that straighten the joint and bring the bones farther apart. So when one muscle or set of muscles contracts, the other relaxes. So when a flexor contracts, the extensor is relaxed. So an example of this is bending the elbow. So when you bend your elbow, you make your biceps contract and the triceps relax. And then agonists are muscles that promote movement and antagonists are muscles that oppose movement. And we're gonna take a look at an example of this. So um, pitching in baseball or softball is an example where you can see agonists and antagonists. So the pitch is started by agonists. Remember, they're the muscles that promote movement. And then it's stopped by antagonists. And this makes the pitch fast and precise. And also just something to know is that sometimes both agonists and antagonists contract. And this is called co-contraction. Okay, so now we're going to talk about alpha motor neurons. So the central nervous system controls all these muscle movements and there's thousands of muscle fibers in a single skeletal muscle. And so alpha motor neurons can control anywhere from a few to a hundred plus muscle fibers. And when an alpha motor neuron controls several muscle fibers, it's called a motor unit. And diseases such as amyotrophic lateral sclerosis or ALS for short happen when motor neurons die so the alpha motor neurons can't control the muscle movement and so it this causes paralysis and something to note is that not all movements are like direct muscle movements so for example muscles in the head or the neck can control soft tissue movements like jaw or eye movements So now we're going to talk about involuntary movements, and these are kind of like the opposite of voluntary movements, so they're done unconsciously. And reflexes or automatic responses are an examples of this, are an example of this. And so think about like when you touch a hot stove, um, your hand just jerks away, like you don't even think about it, right? So that's an example of a reflex. Um, another example is you might have gotten this done at the doctor's so it's like the doctor has a little plastic hammer and they just tap it below the knee and your knee or your leg like kicks forward it's just a reflex you don't even think about it and so sensory receptors are activated and a rapid response is formed and this is done without brain involvement and instead it depends on neural circuits near the spinal cord so now, if you can, I highly encourage you to try this little, like, activity. So you're going to sit, um, like, on a chair or the side of the bed, and make sure that your knee, the back of the knee, isn't touching the edge. So there's, like, a little space, like the guy in the middle picture. And also, you don't want your foot to be touching the floor, so you want it um, hanging. And you're going to, like... Um, we're not going to use a hammer, you're going to use uh, your arm, you're just going to like flex your fingers, so, like, like you're going to karate chop something, and this is going to be your hammer, and so while your leg, you're going to relax your leg, and just gently, but not too gently, you're just going to karate chop below your kneecap, and it might take a few tries to get the right spot, but, um, and don't worry, it doesn't hurt, you just... Um, your leg or your knee just jerks or like kicks forward so just you can try it just something fun 
And now we're going to talk about um, why this happens. So the tap, um, when you tap the below your kneecap, um, this makes the knee extensor muscle slightly stretch. And so the muscle spindles in the muscle sense this stretch and they stimulate the sensory neurons. And then the sensory neurons send signals to the spinal cord which activate alpha motor neurons and inhibit motor neurons that control the antagonist. So, and the inhibiting and activation is done by connecting neurons in the spinal cord. And so then the alpha motor neurons cause the stretched extensor muscle to contract and the flexor muscles to relax. And you might be thinking, like, why is this useful? The because the knee jerk, it sounds like something you would never do, right? But the same movement is applied when landing, like for example, in gymnastics, when you land a tumbling pass or just jumping just straight up and down, um, like the stick, you know, when you stick landing, this same movement is done where the extensor muscles contract and the flexor muscles relax and to it kind of gives you like the stick portion of the landing so now we're going to talk about muscle spindles and golgi tendon organs so muscle spindles um it's like we talked about earlier but they also have another function which is to supply information so that the system adjust sensitivity levels and it does this through gamma motor neurons and then golgi tendon or organs they're located where the muscle fibers connect to tendons and their function is to detect force and tension on the muscle and they allow the muscle to move more precisely and these both are examples of feedback systems that allow the brain to kind of like fine-tune the muscle behavior and again another note is that there's other neurons that have different functions as well so for example um, some neurons can direct movement to a particular area so like if you think about um, when you're eating something um, these neurons tell your hand to move towards your face so that you can put the spoon in your mouth and so lastly, I made uh, quizzes. It's just like a little short quiz. It's only 10 questions. If you've never played before, it's, again, it, there's just multiple choice, select all that apply answers. It's just like a little mini quiz. And I encourage you to do it to review the information you learned and to make it stick.